Welcome to See It and Feel It with Dr. Brett. And I'm Dr. Brett. And today I'm here with Kyle Leeds, professional golfer, all around good guy, former hockey player. Um, you're in this whole journey here. Tell yes. us about the transition from hockey to golf and how you made that. And then we'll catch you up, catch us up to what you're up to now. Um, so I, I grew up in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, and um, you know, grew up playing hockey, grew up playing all types of sports. Um, and when I came to high school, um, I guess in that area, or one of the things you do when you're trying to play hockey at a high level is you go to board, go to boarding school. Gotcha. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities to do that. You know, it'll take you to better college maybe. Um, but it's just, it's better hockey. It's more like a, it's more like a life instead of just playing like a season at home. Um, so I went to boarding school. Uh, which school did you go to? Just out of curiosity. I went to South Kent. Okay. In, South, uh, Kent. South Kent. Beautiful Kent. area. Yeah. 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 So for people that don't know, I mean, that part of like Northern Connecticut. So Northwest Connecticut is just Litchfield County, right? It's just yeah. beautiful up there. So you, you know, how long did you, how much did you play at South Kent? Oh, uh, hockey? Yeah. Um, how long did you play there? Oh, I was there for two, two years. Gotcha. Um, and you know, it's much longer seasons there. It's August to March. Um, wow. You know, you play like 80, 90 games, which is Wow. That's a ton awesome. of hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which is what I, you know, what I was looking for. Um, wow. And it, it gets you more experience and it takes you further mm. into what you're trying to do were um, you a wing what were you uh i was a defenseman really yeah okay cool mm. so was that fun like being a defenseman yeah no, i love yeah. that hit people <laughs> um but for me it was like more like i like to go behind the net and uh quarterback the play really so like you kind of go behind the net and you see everything that's happening as a defenseman and you decide like okay i'm breaking out the puck i'm gonna go to the right because you're behind the net mm -hmm. or i'm gonna go to the left or i'm gonna go you know, around the net and up the middle, like, it, you, which you don't really want to do because you <laughs> might, <laughs> you might get puck taken away and scored. But, um, right. uh, that's what I really liked about playing defense is, um, kind of going back there, trying to see what's going on and then going to do it. Um, gotcha. And that, I think, you know, now, now that I kind of verbalize it, that's something I love about golf. Um, yeah. It's kind of like a puzzle. There's no like right way to do it. Um, you just have to, you have to choose it. Yeah. Um, and it's all on you. Yeah, um, for sure. And that's what I liked about going behind the net and quarterback in the play is it was all on me. Right. Even though hockey is a team sport. Right. It's like if I go up the middle and I, you know, and I right. can curse on this channel. Yeah. I, you I, do I don't want to. Uh, no, do it. If I, you know, if I. Fight, but Jamal can handle. <laughs> I don't, I just, you know, I don't, I don't <laughs> We're worry, good. I don't want to have people to edit too, edit too much. Um, no, be yourself. Um, um, no, but, you know, if you yeah. go, if you take it up the middle and you fuck it up, like. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's on you. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and. It's funny because, you know, you'd think like if you get like nervous or whatever, like don't do well on the spotlight, like that's not what you want, but it's like it is. I don't know. It, it, that's what I would like. Gotcha. I liked it. Whether you get yelled at for screwing it up or you get like yeah. praise for doing it well. Yeah. I liked that. Yeah. Um, now, did you ever think about playing junior hockey? Because a lot of kids do that, like in the transition. Yeah. Um, right. Do so it. I, you know, going to boarding school was really important for me, um, sports wise, but like emotionally and mentally, um, it was really important for me because my parents, uh, divorced at a younger age, um, right, right around like middle school to high school transition. Right. Um, and that was, that was tough for me. And, um, so going to boarding school was, was good for me to get away from some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So the transition into hockey, how'd you transition to golf though? Like, did you think about playing junior hockey, yeah, yeah. D3 so, hockey or D1, um, and going, then you somehow switched? How did you, how'd you make that transition? Um, going from hockey to golf, like when I went to boarding school, yeah. um, there was a golf course across the street. Oh, and, nice. um, you know, I, I played golf a little bit growing up. My dad was a big golfer. Um, he was a professional. Uh, he played tennis professionally. Really? I didn't pro. know that. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So good athlete. Wow. And my mom was a good athlete. Um, so I... Got some lucky was he a ferocious tennis player? Because tennis is pretty like pretty intense. Yeah. I mean, like how good was he, your dad? Uh, he was a really good player. Really? Um, played how, professional what kind of serve events. did he have? 130 uh, mile an hour serve? I don't know. I mean, I this guy's got a 124 uh, mile an hour club head speed, something like that. Yeah. 124 or something. Yeah, right. Matter, right. So yeah. I'm thinking his dad probably had at least 130 mile an hour serve. What? As it can be faster, it can be slower yeah. depending on what you're trying to right. do and no, totally. weather and all that. 
that stuff. But um, yeah, my dad was you know really good, really good tennis player. Played professional events, and but he hurt, he hurt his back, so um, oh gotcha. Yeah, he, uh, he so, couldn't continue. With yeah. It. Um, but uh, transitioning from hockey uh, to golf, there's a golf course across the street uh, gotcha. where I went to boarding school. Um, and even though I played growing up like once or twice a year, kind of like everybody does, <laughs> you, know, you play like you go to the ring range play like once or twice a year it's so true so many people do that you ask them if they ever play golf right yeah yeah yeah, 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 like six months ago (laughs) um and so i I went to boarding school and we had that golf course across the street and it was really i was in a a weird kind of transitional period um mentally emotionally and that was tough for me uh sports-wise like playing hockey um I think that really affected affected me on the ice. Um, mm. You know, I would I was not in a great state of mind. Mm. Even though going to boarding school was important for me to, to kind of get away from what was going on in my home life, um, I had a lot of unresolved issues mm. that from growing up that I couldn't deal with going to boarding school because I didn't have you know the help to do it. Right. Um, so I, I think that affected me a lot in my sports. Um, and I'd get on the ice and I would not be free. I'd be really like, yeah, oh, I, like I don't want to even that's what I was saying before. Like, you know, I really enjoyed being the person that like, if you fuck it up, like, you know, everyone's mad at you. But if you do well, everybody's happy, which is yeah. a weird thing to like if you're like kind of struggling with your confidence and stuff yeah. like that. But whatever, you know, that's just, yeah. you know, some people. So just like that so <laughs> yeah no totally um, yeah it makes sense some um, people are like that so do you know going through that hockey's kind of tough politically going to college and playing junior stuff and um it was just a lot it was a lot for me to deal with um, gotcha. i was also i was a very good lacrosse player too wow um, so i was when i went to college when it was time to go to college i chose to go to a uh, smaller d3 school to, and play hockey there um hmm. somewhere i knew i'd be able to play um, right and maybe not have to deal with such pressure of right like playing at a big program and then totally d1 I, is pretty brutal and i was yeah. but they had a very good lacrosse team better d1 mm. lacrosse team so i was gonna i was gonna walk on and play lacrosse there too and that was the intention in going there um but that was kind of all at the same time as golf kind of entered my life um, yeah. so i had a lot of things going on at once and it yeah. was i did couldn't decide like what i wanted to do but golf was just entering my life and that's kind of how the transition began. Yeah. Um, and when did it sort of take hold for you fire wise in terms of you deciding this is it, I'm going to give it the, you know, the full shebang here. You um, know, how did you make that decision? Did it creep up on you or did one day you woke up with it or you knew right away as soon as you transitioned? I think I, think I knew right away uh, as soon as I hit a couple of my like first golf shots by myself out there at boarding school. Really? I think no lessons. You just kind of yeah. figured it out. Um, and yeah, I think striped a couple. And in the back like, of my mind, it. I was like, "This is it for me." Like something, oh. something happened. It made sense. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I've always been someone who, like, very deep down, no matter what's going on in my head, like I know I can do great things. Mm. Like I know I can, I can do things that like other people might not be able to do. Right. Like, and so, in the back of my mind even though like it sounds crazy and like people don't think like this and it's not the norm, you know, I hit a couple great golf shots and I was like, that's it. Like, I want to do this. Like that was it. But it took me a few years to really like for it to hit me like consciously being like, well, yeah, I'm going to play professionally. Like, this is what I want to do. Let me change, change it up. Right. Um, Right. And I think that first year when I went to college, um, Mm. I brought golf clubs uh, with me Mm -hmm. and I was on the internet like day and night. How do you be a professional golfer? How do you make golf your career? (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you have to do? How do you play better? How do you do this? How do you do that? I like scoured the internet. I've researched everything I could. I watched everything I could. I spent money Uh, on like, I I, I dove right in like, cause I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be, I want to be a professional golfer. Like I knew that for a while, what I'm, kind of getting at is when I hit those first couple shots and it's like they were right and in my mind I was like I want to be the best in the world and that's <laughs> what I didn't know yet wow. I knew I knew it but I didn't yeah I unconsciously knew it like because mm-hmm. I've always wanted to be the best in the world at something wow. and I know I can do it right but it took like a lot of life experiences and things 
and like moving pieces to find what it is yeah. that is my like version of being the best in the world. And how do you like handle like the doubts when they come? Because like everybody goes through phases where they yeah yeah for you know sure. that belief gets solidified, then yeah. it kind of gets questioned at times, right? It's Absolutely, like, yeah. yeah. And especially with something like that, because right. people don't just like. If you play golf your entire life, or you do something your entire life, and you tell someone, "I'm oh, I'm going to be a professional," they're like, "Ah, like yeah, yeah, like cool." Like uh, and you know how many people, and then they throw a bunch of statistics at you, at like, right? Like you know who does this, and blah, 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 right? blah. And I, something like that. When we first started working together, I, yeah. I remember I would tell you, I'd be like, "Oh, like I would get mad when people would like tell me things like that," because I was like, "Well, really, what they're telling me is that they're projecting their stuff onto me." Mm. which is like they don't think that they can do one of those things or they don't think it's possible they don't it's not even in the realm of their mind yeah for it's sure and then some people though are naysayers too exactly by nature, yeah. right? so i i so. when i first when for people were first telling me that i didn't understand it really and i was like mm. why are they like i would get mad and i, I remember we were talking yeah. about that i'd be like why are they telling me these like how many people don't make it and how many people like percentage blah blah, blah. and i'm I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, someone's got to freaking make it. So like, <laughs> why, why not me? Yeah, why not me? That reminds me of Russell Wilson when he won the Super Bowl at a very young age. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, famously asking himself that question, "Why not me?" Yeah, right. I love Russell Wilson. Yeah, and me Pete too. I'm like a huge they're fan. Awesome, yeah, man. I've been listening to the the uh, you know shameless plug. Like I'm not trying uh. to sell anything, here, <laughs> but I've been listening to their audio book and it's oh, very it, cool. They, they, Pete Carroll uh, has a saying. That it's always compete. Um, always compete. That's his. That's his thing. Yeah. No matter I what think it is. around emotional intimacy, you kind of want to not always compete. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's certain areas yeah. where no, you're, you know you're, what you almost want to do the opposite. Yeah. Right. That's why a lot of really successful people, financially and in their you know in their professions or whatever, sometimes they struggle with their personal lives because yeah, the they point. can't turn off the always compete. But yes. In terms of like yeah. developing who you are, but yeah, right, no, I, I it's love pretty Russell healthy. Wilson yeah, PK, so that's awesome. So, what has been the hard, you know, what are the hardest parts of this journey to, you know, as a golfer? You know, what are, you know, what are the biggest challenges yeah. you've faced so far? Um, that's a good question. Um, oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, um, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> um, going back to the doubts thing that you were just yeah. talking about, um, I used to get angry about right. the people telling me these statistics and it's not, I don't care about external doubts. I don't care if that guy over there, you know, there's no one over there, but I, <laughs> there is. Um, I don't care if that guy over there thinks I'm not going to make it. I don't care if that guy, you know, his wife is like, Oh, well, you know, he doesn't look like right. he's swinging it that good. When people tell me things, it kind of stirs up my own anxiety or used to at least right. where it's like you have your own internal doubts. And I mm. think those are the most dangerous yeah. things um, for an athlete or for, especially in an individual sport, but an athlete who's trying to be mm. the best in the world and doing it at least the way that I'm doing it, which is very trying to do it in a shorter span of time than most would, because I didn't start yeah, my, my craft till later. Back as a background as a hockey player. Yeah, right? exactly. exactly. Um, and also lacrosse. For sure. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those internal doubts, I think as an athlete are the are the most dangerous because yeah. you're trying to be and how do you banish those doubts like how do you work on that how is it like you know thanks for watching see it and feel it with dr brett and stay tuned for part two of this interview remember to like subscribe and share with a friend